Welcome back to Absolute Duo Anime Review Episode Number Three. You're probably thinking you're taking a while for these ones. Well, because the books are quite lengthy, and plus the other books as well. That's simple gist of it. This one I'm discussing four episodes instead of three, though I kind of think that ten basically is kind of part of book four because I don't remember seeing this basically because it ends on a cliffhanger that gets resolved in the next couple episodes. I kind of think that, but I have read book four yet. I'll read it soon. Okay, thing starts off with the main characters going to this island, which has the branch school there. Yep, the branch school of the main school they're going to is Thor. So basically you have, basically him and hey, okay, we're not going to stop there with the boat. You're all going to swim there. Swim the rest of the way. So she kind of forced them all to swim, basically dumping all, 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 all the students there overboard. So... Because, well, Julie can swim. Now, I know her name is pronounced UA in the anime, but the way it's spelled, it's basically spelled Julie. So, she clings onto him, of course, she swims, and then, of course, well, Liv decides to jump into the fray, basically take off her clothes, and you are thinking, wait, is she jumping in naked? No, she actually wearing to look like a swimsuit. And then she gets ashore with them, and, of course, she's very happy to see Thor. They get to shore, and then, they, of course, they dry off. Of course, Thor's, like, very exhausted after basically digging UA. And they get power into the island, where basically Tor, being a gentleman, decides to tear up his shirt, basically to make up makeshift shoes for Lilith, because all she's wearing is a bikini. Well, basically, mostly it's her underwear, because she got her clothes on the helicopter she flew in. And then they come across a bunch of ninjas, who turn out to be the students of this place. Yep, one of whom happened to be somebody he met way back in the pilot episode of the series. Yes. Yeah, making her first appearance since, of course, the start of the series. Let's see if we can find it here. Here it is. Yeah, making her first appearance since the start of the anime. Yes, not really sure why, but that's basically where she is. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Amari. Yes, she's back for this episode. Now, she does have a partner to make Steam in this episode. She is voiced by... Get this. Okay. Her partner is voiced by Jimmy Marceri. Yeah, she only gets like a couple of lines in, in like episode number 8 or 9 I think it is. And that's it. I'm like, really? You bring in Jimmy Marceri, a fantastic voice actress. And give her like 2 or 3 lines. That's it. Yeah. They also show in these episodes, Equipment Smith. He was mentioned back in the previous episodes. Yeah, he's voiced by Kent Williams. Yeah, he finally makes the appearance. He's basically just an old man who apparently the headmistress knows him because basically through her grandfather, through reputation. Okay. Yeah, though he briefly appears, he appears briefly, I think it's like in episode 7, I think it is. He returns to episode 9, and he's also in episode 10. He's not in episode 8. So, hijinks ensue. Well, they set up a tent, and of course we have Thor, and, well... Julie basically will sleep in the tent, and when he wakes up in the morning, he sees Lilith's chest in his face. She's coming to his tent completely naked, and Julie's naked too. They have reasons. Now, Julie's reason because it's hot. They're on a tropical island. In the case of Lilith, because she always sleeps butt naked. And then, of course, <laughs> Tolay comes in like, You pervert and you dog! <laughs> I would go with a dog, but man, you have two beautiful women next to you. I mean, it's very implied he may have had three-way, but nope. <laughs> nope, not three-way. Just two women who just happily sleep with him naked for... <laughs> I think no reason, of course, Tony does apologize later for the misunderstanding. And almost hilariously possible because, of course, she's from Japan. He had to do the constant bowing. And then, of course, they have a little exercise and, of course, their second to last day. And then they say to... Have a beach episode! Yep, beach episode! Where all the girls wear swimsuits. And only Tor going to the beach. And the first girl you see is Julie. He describes her outfit as cute. Lilith is described as gorgeous. Tomway is beautiful. Emway is basically fit, very athletic. In the case of Moari, she's still very lovely, a great looking swimsuit. In the case of Professor Bun Bun, who just happens to come along, and she's like, what do you think of my swimsuit? Uh, it's your normal self. And of course she, of course her B-I-T-C-H self. Yes, he actually does, he actually does swear. 
Yeah, there's occasional swearing in the series. Not a lot of it, surprisingly. Yes. So, in case you're curious, though, do they drop the F-bomb in the series? In the 10 episodes I've watched, no. They don't drop the F-bomb at all in these past 10 episodes. So, they go swimming, and of course, well, Julie's out in the water, well, in her in her float because she can't swim. Julie, of, co- uh, of course, not Luke, Julie, um, Lilith decides to have to- Thor give her basically cover in suntan lotion. Her, her basically her butler, who was a woman, gets jealous of this. Yes, she is jealous over her employer. <laughs> jealous of her employer because, well, the man who her employer is in love with is putting suntan lotion on her. And it's a great thing, basically, do here. They do a thing a couple times basically where the girls tops come off like the first time we have we're trying to do the water special contest and Tony's top comes up and then Julie basically she comes back and her top comes off don't worry don't, t- Thor has nothing to do with it they go retrieve it and well and then hot spring and he's the only one in this hot spring now you're probably thinking okay we have a hot spring here is he going to try to peep on the girls Nope, he doesn't. Despite being called a pervert, he's not actually a pervert. I mean, he doesn't peep on the girls at all. They're all completely naked. Of course, it's a hot spring. And, of course, Professor Bun Bun decides to grope her students. Yep. Just like, oh, let's check this breast size. It's a typical anime trope. And unlike in Two Love, in Two Love Rue, it's not censored. Which... Thank you, the studio who makes the series. Thank you for not censoring that because the censoring was stupid. I hate the censoring that they did in To Love Rue. Like, you're, gro- you're censoring groping. Yeah, that's something... That, I mean, yeah, that's something for kids to watch, but come on, it's so stupid. So first, it's I think it's like Tone and Moari gets a chance to do this. Surprisingly, Ju- well, actually, also Lilith gets a chance to get to this too. Surprisingly, Lilith, not Lilith, uh, Julie does not get through this because she's got the smallest breast of everybody. And it's also revealed that Moari has got a thing. Well, of course, Moari we're talking to Moari basically tells, t- yeah, you're in love with Tor. And then, of course, then, well, all the girls just go, go off with little kitchen duty. And then she, and of course, Amara fake an injury, and then to go on walk on the beach, and then she confesses that she's in love with Tor, and he's like, I can't, because I'm weak, because he's flashback to his tra- 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 trauma, and then she's like, I'm sorry, and then she just cries and just runs away. He does not see her again until episode ten, and then right after that, the school is attacked by rebels. Yes, the same people from the last set of episodes, actually from episode six. Yes, the very same guys. As a matter of fact, K. Well, the guy who was K. He comes back at the end of episode eight, and there's a big brawl. And soon, of course, a lot of the students get wounded because of this guy so rebel stuff, and they beat them up. And of course, K. takes the headmistress, and Lilith basically protects the mistress very well with her body because she's their close friends. So she asks Tor to go rescue her, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll do that." No problem. So him and Julie go basically rescue her. While Tomari goes to look for more. They don't find her at all. I mean, she doesn't even get to episode 10. In the most bizarre thing, basically, that happens. So, they go and they rescue the headmistress, who actually is on a boat. Very nice looking boat. And they confront the driver. Oh, his name is Kay. The real name is Kay in the episode. And they fight really well. The fight, the fight scene is done really well in the anime. Though, of course, Tor basically does a pretty good well, does fight well, until he gets wounded. He gets stabbed twice. First in the, first in the leg and then the shoulder. And then Julie goes freaking nuts. Basically goes like this darkness mode. Slices him up like crazy. Like if this and bring him close, but first he smashes his first set of armor. Oh, look, there's another set of armor right underneath. And then he gets away. He's like, he gets one guy. Come on, it's like, hey, we got what we wanted. Let him go. He's like, okay, fine. And he goes... And, of course, well, they get back to the island, and, of course, Mari is still missing. And then, of course, the headmistress, who basically tells because the school was damaged, heavily damaged, like, they're ordered by their teacher to go home. And that's search for the missing student. Yeah. Professor Bun Bun, you do realize, though, when your student is missing and you, and you don't bother to look for her? What is wrong with you? Yeah, seriously, that's what I gotta say about it. 
I mean, I get the fact you're hot, but you're a complete bimbo. So they go on the boat. That's basically a good story of episode 10, which I think this may be from book 4. Because I don't remember this happening in book 3 because they had a, like, a nice ending to it. Though I'm thinking this is from book 4 because, well, next episode is to continue from basically this episode left off. I will think, I will figure it out when I read book 4. So they go home and, of course, basically they get a phone call prior to this. Lily answers the phone and it's a rain conference. What is the rain conference? Is this basically gathering of certain people, which they reveal in this episode, who they are. There's the silent diva. Now, let me introduce basically these people in this episode because, well, it is quite interesting. Well, this is episode 10. Equipment is voiced by Kent Williams. Then we have silent diva, lovely woman who's got blue hair and she's by Don M. Bonnet. First time I've actually heard her voice, does a really good job. And let's see. Mm. Let's see if I can... There's actually a few others here. I'm surprised they're not listening to the damn page. Yeah, I'm not really sure why, but... Yeah, let's see if we can find him here. Or as I mentioned, the absolute do, which is the title of the series. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find the name of these characters. There's the Grey Phantom. Yeah. This guy... They don't really say who voices him. Yeah, he appears in, ep in this episode here. Let's see if I can find out who his, who his voice actor is. Because he sounds familiar. It doesn't really say who exactly voices him at all. No, not really. There's also... Yeah, there's like one other guy pops up in here. Aside from the Grey Phantom. Is it him? No, it's not that one. Oh, here it is. Temptus Judge. Yeah, he appears in the episode. He's voiced by J. Michael Turnham, who does an absolute... He's basically kind of like a gentleman. So, they all invite everybody to sit at this table, which seems like a very futuristic table. Not the first time I've seen a scene like this in, in, in anime. I also saw a similar scene to this in... Uh, Sarah for the End had a very similar scene. Yeah, basically people talking around a table. And yes, in case you're wondering, though, same exact thing happened in the film The Last the Naruto movie. Yeah, people gather on a table with this these like futuristic like holographic screens and discuss basically including like okay, 
I'm going on Purple Alliance with you. And Mitch is like, no way, I'm not following an alliance with a guy who betrayed the organization and basically is against my grandfather. That's what you know about him. He's like, okay, why don't we have a killing game? We'll have my rebels attack your students. And it's sanctioned. He's like, okay. And also, I should point out, Kabe basically, at the end of episode 9, decides to put on this, to so go with him, put on the suit, he just gets stronger because Thor is weak. And of course, everyone's wondering where the heck is she is. No one knows where she is. And of course, Tor goes to Lilith exactly what exactly is the ring conference. She explains what it is. And she explains Absolute Duo. And then they have the killing game. Well, the start of it, anyways. Where they show up like, oh, let's see me our new let's meet our new helper. It's, of course, Makari, who decides to strip like basically shred her own clothing to show off the suit. Okay? And next episode is going to pick up right where this one left off, which I kind of figured though this is probably from book four. I don't think this is from book three. Yes. I gotta say, good episodes. I like it. I like the common anime tropes they have here, like you see in the anime, like beach episode, hot springs, guy, guy wakes up with, with girls in his bed. Well, basically in his tent. Nothing unusual here. Very typical anime stuff. Purely enjoyable. And I kind of think that basically the episode 10 comes from basically book 4, not book 3. But I'll, I'll find that out more when I read book number 4. I, it probably won't come soon. The next book I'm reading is, right now, this is my next light novel I'm reading right now, Death March Trailer Rhapsody, book number 9. And then I'm going to read the next book, Rising of Shirt Hero. And then I'll read episode two, book 4. I'll read it soon, definitely. And I'll discuss my thoughts on... The final two episodes of the series, and if in fact the series could come back for season two, which is a good amount of material for season two. There's basically like, well, I would suggest basically finish on the book four first, but I'll think about that when I read book four because I think that a lot of the stuff that happened this episode is from book four, not book three. Okay, so that's it for particular of you. My next video, comment corner. And yes, I will hopefully get a chance to do reviews for Fire Force, Case Closed, and Quintessence Quintessence. Okay, see you next video. Bye.